So there's about two months where there's nothing that's going to happen. Hello everyone today, our guest is Gareth Soloway. In this video, Gareth Soloway talks about how he thinks Elon Musk has the ego mindset, Sailor's massive Bitcoin bet, Fed's strategy on interest rate hikes and inflation, and much more on Bitcoin predictions. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Bitcoin regained more lost ground on the July 28 Wall Street, open amid confusion over whether the United States had entered a new recession. Data from Coinlegraph Markets Pro and TradingView tracked BTC USD as it tested $23,000 for support after a leg up on the previous day's Federal Reserve rate hike. Momentum benefited from US GDP data, which fell for a second quarter in a row, thus meeting the requirements for a recession in the economy. U.S. economy in technical recession as GDP shrinks for a second quarter. Q2 GDP fell at a 0.9% annualized rate as inventories. Residential investment subtract from growth after a 1.6% decline in the first three months of the year. The situation remained unclear, however, thanks to comments from both Fed Chair Jerome Powell and the White House both of whom insisted that no recession had arrived or was even forecast. While Powell stated that the U.S. is not in a recession, numbers from GDP gave two consecutive quarters of negative growth, meaning that the United States is in a recession. But, but you're absolutely right. Like Tesla, like why didn't Tesla have like a financial modeler mm -hmm. that's going to even, you know, just hedge 5% or something. It's not like Tesla can't afford to like open an options account somewhere and... Yeah. and or even, even I mean, with their AI technology, how are they not creating a trading algorithm <laughs> that just is like blowing everyone else away, right? You would you would think. I mean, and and especially you know, Elon's good at psychology. I don't I don't love Elon Musk, but something he is actually good at is is the psychology of reading people, and I think that that's got to translate a little bit. Ton hundred percent. The one thing, and this is as a trader's perspective, is like you see some of the comments he makes, and and he definitely has that emotional ego kind of thing oh, yeah. and, and it's so interesting from a trader's perspective because that's the one thing that as a trader you cannot let that ego get in front of you because it will make you go broke and it's just yeah. interesting to watch from a from a psychological trading perspective how he still falls into that i mean he's such a smart guy but it's still it doesn't mean make you immune from from emotion yep no it's it's funny i i tweeted a couple weeks ago it got like Super viral. I don't know that Twitter pushed it out or whatever, but I said the same thing about Michael Saylor. I was like, mm -hmm. the dude's a genius, right? Like he's, I mean, he went to MIT, he's done all this data analytics stuff. Like MicroStrategy is actually a pretty cool company in, in doing what it does. But like my, my tweet was, he might be the worst living investor, if not the worst investor of all time. <laughs> like he got murdered better than anybody else or worse than anybody else in the dot-com crash. He lost yeah. $6 billion in a day and almost $14 billion overall. Oh. In, in the in the crash there. He was reported across, you know, Forbes and Bloomberg. This man lost more money than anybody else. And, you know, it's like, and now he is, I guess, a little bit better now, but he's probably still somewhere near a billion dollars underwater on the best yeah. performing asset of the last decade itself, right. too. And like, I think that's, that's such a great point is how, you know, you see traders and investors tend to fall into the same repeating kind of scenarios of, of getting excited over something, getting invested in it, believing in it, believing that it'll just go up forever. And it just shows you that, I mean, anyone out there who, who did get hurt in whether it's Bitcoin or BSV or, 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 or um, you know, anything else, you're not alone and there's a lot smarter people falling into these same traps. So, I mean, it's important to learn from our mistakes, but it's also important to give yourself a break sometimes and say, hey, listen, let me learn and then do better next time. So the, the things I, I keep reminding myself of, and I am in the camp, I am long Bitcoin right now. I have some Ethereum long from right around this area. I do think we have a bounce, a bigger bounce in store, maybe coinciding with the Federal Reserve on tomorrow or yep. the GDP on Thursday. but. I don't think the bottom is in yet. I haven't seen enough of that kind of washout. And I know mm -hmm. no one wants to hear this and we just want to cover and cover. And, but I, I, I agree though. I, I'm yeah. in the same boat. I keep telling people, guys, this is, this is a bounce. This is yeah. a, this is a relief rally. <laughs> and I mean, all you have to do, I mean, everyone wants to believe it's a bottom, but the things that bother me is that number one, in previous 
uh, cycles, we've always seen 80 to 85% correction, right? Well, we haven't done that on Bitcoin yet. And to even make matters worse, this is the first time in Bitcoin's history where the Fed's not printing money that would, wouldn't think like if, if it, if the Fed was printing money in those previous ones and it went 80 to 85%, it makes me scared to think, well, what if this could it go 90%? I mean, I, I don't know. And again, right. it's scary to think that way, but I think as an investor and a trader, you, you have to always prepare for the worst. And if it doesn't come, then that's fine. But you never want to think the best because that's when you get wiped out. Right. So I, just like, just like that, I learned, I learned the hard way early on. And I, and I found out that, the first step in any good investor's, you know, business plan, swing trading, investing is to, uh, number one, face the fact that you're not going to always pick the bottom, right? Especially when you're bottom fishing, as they call. So I do exactly use the term. I call it the shotgun effect, which yep. is like, instead of picking one specific entry to throw all your money at, just spread it out in a general range. And so, so what I did is, is, you know, with Bitcoin, I still think it's got downside after this latest bounce. I still think we actually have one more little push up. But I think it's going to 12, 13,000, maybe even lower. But I, when it got to 19,000, I said, you know what? I'm going to divide the amount of money that I want to put at risk in Bitcoin and I'm going to do one sixth at 19,000. And then every two to 3,000 down, I'll just put another one sixth in until I have a six six position, right? A full position. And, and I, I agree 100% is that, you know, if it doesn't get to 12 or 13, I don't want to be sitting there with no Bitcoin at all right. when it runs to 100 to a half a million. So, yeah. so I'm more than fine on expecting to be down on, on from a 19,000 entry if it goes to 12 or 13, um, especially if I'm dollar cost averaging. And so I do that exactly. And I think it's, it's important for investors to, you know, number one, one of the greatest things about that technique is it takes emotion out of it, right? Because if Bitcoin, if you go all in at one level and Bitcoin down goes down three, four, five, six, seven thousand, you know, your, your adrenaline, you're like, oh my goodness, what if it goes to zero? When I have a one six position right now, I'm like, I kind of hope it goes down because I want to get more, you know, right. like it just <laughs> takes that emotional edge because you're not investing so much capital at one shot, I'm hugely thinking. tied. Right. So, so we saw Walmart warning about earnings that mean that created a kind of a risk off atmosphere in technology stocks and in the stock market, which then brought Bitcoin down. Now, the one positive about Bitcoin is it's holding this upsloping trend line and mm -hmm. it's still holding the 2017. Uh, highs right here around 19,500, 700 area. So, so for me, I like the fact that you went from 19,000 to 24 and change in seven days. And now we've pulled back two, four, six, seven days, and we've only given up a little over half of that gain. So I like that. I like the fact that it's holding this line. I would like to see it get back above this pivot point right here, this 21.8. But again, I'm just kind of monitoring it, but I'm still neutral to positive on Bitcoin here as long as it holds these two lines right down here. <laughs> yeah. And, and let's be clear. Right. So I, and in, in all fairness, we're talking I'm, I'm talking swing trade move where yeah. I expect one more move up, at least touching twenty five five. But let's mm -hmm. be clear. This pattern is a bearish flag pattern. It's an in spirit yeah. of bear flag. So the, the midterm move, my my, sh my my short term outlook is bullish. My midterm move is bearish down to 12, yeah. 13. And then my long term, you know, years out, I continue to just think that Bitcoin becomes the more digitized gold and kind of the store of safety BSV. I think all of these ones survive and, and ultimately thrive if they're in the top 20, 30. And what, what's going to be the kicker for how the markets move afterwards is going to be the guidance that they give because they don't have another meeting till September. So there's about two months where there's nothing that's going to happen. And, and what I want to hear, which would be bullish for cryptocurrency is that, okay, we raised another 75 today. We're now going to be data dependent, meaning that if we continue to see weakening economic news, maybe they don't hike as much. And now remember that inflation has topped. And again, the CPI and PPI numbers haven't shown that. But if you just compare where commodities were over the last, you know, the previous month that the CPI and PPI showed, and then where commodities have fallen to, it's very, very clear that that should start to translate through. So, so the Fed probably sees that. And again, if you want to risk on environment, the Fed needs to be just slightly dovish, yeah. being more data dependent, meaning that they're open to pulling back instead of cramming a recession or a really bad recession down the economy's throat which would be the worst case. If they, if they came out and said, hey, we don't care about the economy, we're gonna keep raising rates till inflation is 2% or lower, that would be bad for risk assets. But I don't think that they'll do that. So I'm kind of in the small positive side going into the Fed tomorrow.
One of the largest stockholders of the Coinbase cryptocurrency exchange has dumped a massive amount of shares as regulators reportedly probed the firm for alleged insider trading. Kathy Wood's investment firm ARK Investment Management has sold a total of more than 1.4 million Coinbase shares, according to daily trade information from ARK on July 26. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.